This is Waimangu Volcanic Valley. It is the young, youngest uh, volcanic ecosystem in the world. All the information's on the sign right here. Mount Tarawera, which is nearby here, actually erupted in 1886, like it's 130 years ago. And it uh, created this whole area. Okay, here's some important information here for you. The shortest walk that you can do is one and a half kilometers, and that takes one hour. To see all the geothermal sites, that's 2.8 kilometers, takes one hour and 35 minutes. And to do the entire walk is 3.6 kilometers, one hour and 50 minutes. And then there's actually a bus that can take you back. There's also a boat cruise here available. If you want to go on boat, uh, we're not doing that today. Unfortunately, it's all booked out. I couldn't get on. This statue is Ruamoko, which represents earthquakes and all volcanic phenomena. The first thing you see when you walk in is the uh, mural on the right hand side showing you the view of the Waimangu geyser which would have erupted in 1903. Obviously this view doesn't exist anymore but they have a mural so it's a cool artist's impression. The second thing that you're going to see are these murals along the track, paintings. And you're going to wonder, what are they doing here? What are they for? Huh? I should probably also oh, mention neat. this too, but the entire walk, for the most part, is either downhill or flat. And trust me, you're going to appreciate that, <laughs> because this is actually quite a long walk to do the entire Waimangu Volcanic Valley. Wow! This is Echo Crater and Frying Pan Lake. I kind of wish that they would have the safety signs like they do at Waiatapu. In Waiatapu they've got like skull and crossbones like with you know 100 degrees Celsius deadly keep out. Here it just says danger keep out but I think you really need that skull and crossbones. Point 18 is the first major junction point. Up the stairs to the Inferno Crater. This is the Inferno, Inferno Crater. It says the, co the color of the lakelet changes depending on the amount of turbulence it's undergoing. Although often a dull grey when the level is low, it can assume an intensely brilliant sky blue colour under ideal circumstances. So in other words, we're here under ideal circumstances. It's blue.
Didn't I see this one before? I'm sure I saw that one before. Is it the same one? I don't know. It's really in your interest to read all of the literature that you are given. So I had been given a pamphlet which explains this art gallery that's on the way. But I hadn't read it because too much paperwork. So actually stop and read and you will understand. Point 28. War Brick Terrace. War Brick Terrace. It's approximately two thirds of the way through. It's an amazing, beautiful little scenic spot where you've got these blue coloured pools and these silica terraces. And it's at this point I decided, oh, I'll take advantage of this nice barbecue table, sit down, have a drink, have a snack, and then pull out my literature and actually read it. And then because, you know, it, like I said before, if you read, you will understand. And oh, look at that. that oh, now, now it all makes sense. Read the pamphlet. All right, 30. <clears throat> well, this is the end. Lake Rotomahana. So what happened was when Mount Tarawera erupted, these pink terraces got smashed. So they don't exist anymore. Now this place is a bird sanctuary too. just a good weather event. There's so much rain in the catchment, the weight of the water Well, you've been to Waimangu. Now buy the t-shirt. I'm gonna get this. It's like the bandana thing. You know, multi-function. Thank <laughs> you. 